here this morning, he was just saying to the taxi driver, just, you know, it'd be nice to be in the beach, but it's even better to be in the house of the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to know that we have this privilege when so many people, so many of our brothers and sisters scattered around the world are unable to meet. They meet, they're quite likely to land up in prison. And yet here we have this privilege today. So just let's thank the Lord for it. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you once again for the privilege of being able to come into your holy presence, to worship you with freedom, with liberty. To give thanks to you, Father, for all your goodness, for all your love, for your abundance provision for each and every one of us day by day. Help us, Father, as we come into your holy presence once again. Just guide us, lead us, speak to our hearts. Use us, Father, for your honor and for your glory. We ask it in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Matthew Chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. It's on the screen, so we can follow it too. We don't have it in our, our Bibles. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen. May the Lord bless this reading to each and every one of our hearts for this morning. Light in the world. What did God save us for? Really, what's behind it all? Will we save it? Merely to come along in church and, and worship God once a week or twice if we're keen. And perhaps if we're very keen, come along to prayer meetings and Bible studies. Is that all we were saved for? Merely to gather here in God, God's house. And that's tremendous. It's a privilege that we have that many people don't have. But it's not all. It's part of God's wonderful plan that he has for each and every one of us here in the world today. Lights. We are lights of the world. Jesus said we are lights. And we are lights that shine all the time. Not just once a week, not just on Sundays. Just, just, just when there's something special on or a special day. We're meant to shine for Jesus all the time in the world in which we're living today. People who never darken the door of a church, when they look at your lives, should see the light of Jesus Christ shining out and through your life in every moment that you walk here in the face of the earth. We are called to be lights. We're sent into the world to be light. Why should we? Why should we? Well, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into a wonderful light. We were called to declare the praises of God, 
to lift up the name of God wherever we walk. Every moment of every day, we're meant to talk about God. We are meant to show to whom we belong. Do people know that you belong to Jesus by the way you walk, by the way you live the Christian life? The Bible says here we were chosen by God as a royal priesthood. The function of the people was to come between God and the people, to glorify God, to lift up the name of God before the people. Do we lift up God before the people that we live and who live around us? who live with us in our homes, in our workplaces, day by day. A holy priest, a chosen people. A chosen people, notice. A chosen. God chose us way back in eternity. We were chosen by God. We didn't choose God. He chose us. And we were chosen so that we might be lights in the world in which we are living today. Do people recognize that we are followers of Jesus Christ by the way we live, by the way we talk, by the way we walk? When we look in the Bible, we find Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. By faith, we were saved. Saved. To shine for Jesus Christ in the world in which we are living today. Where should that light be seen? It says it's in the world. All those who are outside the church should also see our light should recognize that we belong to Jesus. What does light do? What's the function of light? Well, light lightens up the darkness. It dispels the darkness. Do we dispel darkness? Do we show light? Do we show the harm that sin causes in the world in which we live? Do we show the danger to other people of living in sin? Some people might not thank us for it. Because they might lose a lot of money. They might not be able to fulfill their evil desires. They might not be able to do what they want to do, regardless of others. So we may indeed be persecuted for it. There are people who are telling lies, robbing people, spreading pornography, brainwashing people. We want to thank you for being a light, for trying to dispel the darkness. Contrary, they may very well indeed persecute us. But light is meant to dispel the darkness. It's also meant to show the way very good, isn't it, when you're out driving in the car and suddenly darkness comes. You happen to get onto one of these roads where there are no lights. It's very useful, isn't it, to be able to flick your switch and put your lights on. Be able to see the way. There's a way with the darkness. And it gives us a direction. We can look around. We can look at the name of the road. We're looking for somewhere. We don't know where it is, but it's up there somewhere. And the light, of course, gives us direction. Do we give direction to people in life? People who don't know where they're going. They don't know how to get through life. They're just stumbling along day by day. Life has really no purpose, no meaning for them. But you know, when we live as lights, then we'll show them the way. We'll tell them. We'll help them. Help them by telling them how we fulfilled victory in our own lives. It was one of the things that brought me to Christ. I sat there with all these people as an atheist, listening to them. And they were totally unashamed that you talked about their past, 
how God had set him free and how I needed to be set free. That's why I was there sitting in the church because the doctor said, Bill, if you don't get away from drink, drink's going to finish you off. Get away from it. So I went along to the church club rooms and I just sat there and listened to them. And unashamedly, they talked about the victories they had in life, how God had set them free, how they'd been really, really taken in by sin, slaved, enslaved. Then when they came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they were set free. How many people are really needing to have victory? We can help them. We can give direction by, right, by living out the Christian life, by talking about Jesus, by showing the way in the Bible. We can indeed help so many other people in this world which is living in darkness. But then light it also shows what's wrong, what you must avoid. If I'm going along a road and suddenly I see a big sign, it says that the road is closed, then the wise thing to do is to stop the car, isn't it? Or stop by walking down that way. Like the entrance to, to our road at the moment, for example, is closed just below our house, fortunately. And there's a great big huge barrier across the way. But you know, further up, there's a, a small sign that tells people not to go in there. Take another route. How important it is that we tell people, we show them, talk about it. Talk about the benefits that we have of knowing Jesus. There's a right way to live and there's a wrong way to live. We've got to show people the right way to live. There's only one way, and it's the way shown by Jesus. Because there's a tremendous amount of bad influence in the world. People who are pouring out pornography, sex out of marriage, stealing, telling lies, hypocrisy. So we've got to help them. Tell them what's wrong. Give them direction. Show them light in the way. Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 4, In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that you would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. They won't like it. Some people won't like it. The pornography boys, they're making a fortune out of it. They're making their millions out of it. They won't like it if you tell people that it's wrong. Stealing, lying. We've just seen just how much recently, even in the area that we live in, just how much money has been stolen by people who are in power. They don't like it when you say that it's wrong. They'll persecute you, but they will. But then sin, but light also brings life. Back of our house in the garden, we get some lovely flowers. Why are they there? Well, apart from the fact that my wife planted them there, they're still there because the good Lord has given us light, given us sunshine, sent everything that we needed. Light. Knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior brings life. Life abundant, real life. I can tell because I lived it all. Before I became a Christian, I lived one life and I lived it to the full, maximum that I could. But I found it didn't satisfy. Only Jesus can set us free. For those who are addicted to drugs, he sets them free. Those who can't get away from a drink, he sets them free. I know. I've experienced it in my own life. Whatever it is that binds you, Jesus can set you free. We are there. We are placed here in this world to bring life, to point people to Jesus, the only one who can set us free. Set us free wherever we happen to be, in our homes or anywhere else free from wife beating, and thousands of other problems that you can find. Jesus 
sets us free and enables us to live an abundant life. And we can experience it in our own day-to-day -day living. Why? Because the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. By the power of the living God, who gave us a new life, new desires, a new heart, a new power, we can live out the Christian life. We can live a life that pleases God. We can live a life that brings joy, happiness, power, liberty, day by day. And it all comes through Jesus. He enables us. It's not just by coming along to church. It's by knowing the one who brought you here to worship him today. When you know his power in your life, moment by moment each day. When you have experienced the power of the new birth. When the Holy Spirit has made you a new creator, then you're free to enjoy all that life, that abundant life that God has promised to each and every one of us. Life. We are meant to be life bringers. As we wander around in our work, in our homes, in our play, wherever we happen to be, we must show the light. Where? Where do we show our light? You are the light of the world. Wherever you happen to be walking, light must make a difference. It must make a difference. Do you make a difference? Do the places where you pass, are they different as a result of you have been there? Where you live, the home that you live in, the street that you live in, the place that you work in, where you go to relax, are these places different? Because you're there. You've passed through that place. The world would be a much, much better place if every single Christian worked and lived, making a difference. God wants us to make a difference. Is your workplace a better place because you are a Christian? As an employer of a business, are your standards, the standards that Christ has set before us of absolute honesty and integrity? In the workplace as an employee, are we efficient, competent, honest employees? In our homes, as fathers, mothers, do does our way of life reflect the fact that we belong to Jesus? Are we different? In our times of play, of play and relaxation, do our spare time activities show that we are Christians, lights of the world? The way that we talk and think, our attitudes we have towards others, even those who disagree with us, are they different? Did they make a difference in the world in which we live in? What do we need to be lights? We've already mentioned one. The power of the Holy Spirit in our life, transforming our lives and making us a new creation. And the continuing power of the Holy Spirit, empowering us moment by moment every, every day to live out that life. When we attempted to call upon the Lord and receive the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. Are we living in the power of the Holy Spirit? Or are we seeking to live in the power of the flesh? Every day when we get up, we've got to call out again to the Lord to fill us, to fill us, to enable us to live as lights in this world in which we are living today. What kind of lights are we? Are we being empowered day by day by the Holy Spirit? Are we reading his word to find out how to live the Christian life? 
do we really live as Christians in this world in which we live today? No. Are we following the example of Jesus Christ? Lights in the world. How will you, you, how will you be recognized as a Christian, as a light? Listen to these words here in Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 to 37. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers. How, you, how can you say, how can you say who are evil, who, you who are evil, say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. An evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give an account in the day of judgment for empty, every empty word that they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Are you recognized by your fruit? Not just by the fact that you come along to church, which is very important, helps our growth in the Christian life. But people should know you are a Christian by the way that you live, the way that you walk, the way that you talk, by your attitude towards those who disagree with you. Are you walking in the footsteps of Jesus? Are you following his example? A follower of Jesus Christ who is not fulfilling his purpose as a light in this world will suffer loss when our Lord comes back again. We must never, never, ever forget that our Christianity must have an effect on the community around a difference. Wherever we are, whatever we do, in religion, medicine, government, politics, law, whatever, we must make a difference. God wants people, people who want to be involved in every aspect of life. Imagine if we had honest, caring, thoughtful, compassionate people running the country. One of the things that the, these publicity things for the election never tells you about is the moral character, what they really believe of those who are candidates. They're hidden from you. You may vote for someone because they say they're going to do something. They've done something in the recent past in the hope of one day getting up there. But what are they really like? Imagine if we had real, honest to God, thoughtful men and women who went up for politics to get in as councillors, as mayors, and whatever else you want. Imagine. There were people in our community that we knew who lived like that, who didn't just say, but who really lived that life. Imagine the impact it could have on that society. I went as carefully as I could, went through the list of everybody who was up for election in Beckton and Newham. But you know, it's very, very difficult to really work out who to vote for. Very difficult. Because the people who were mentioned there, I really never met a single one of them. Not once had ever one, one of them ever been near my door, talked to me, been to a meeting that I'd been to. I knew nothing about them, except what they said. Imagine if we had people in charge of the big stores, the big businesses, who were applying a reasonable profit margin instead of making a fortune out of the people, pushing the prices up 
COVID's here, let's get the money out of them. Let's rob them. Why should we Christian businessmen who are prepared to really live the Christian life as businessmen? Shining as an employee, as an employer, as a governing authority. Are you shining? Are you making a difference for Jesus Christ? Does your life light shine brightly? Dimly? Or does it at all? Just remember, one day we will be judged by the way that we live the life. Judged. Listen to these words that we find here. For you must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due for the things done whilst in the body, whether good or bad. All of us. Every single one of us. Christians or not, will be judged. Some before the judgment throne of God. Some before the throne of Christ. And the church has taken up to be with them. Judged by what we have done in the body. By our good works. By our good bad works. None of us, without exception, will be judged. And just remember one thing. The one who's going to judge us knows everything. Absolutely everything. Nothing, nothing, nothing is heaven. No thought, no word, no deed, no attitude is hidden from him. He's what we use in theology term, omniscient. He knows everything, absolutely everything, including your thoughts. Are we pleased to realize that he knows everything? All of us, one day, will come before the judgment throne of the Lord, and we will be judged according to our works. Our reward depends on our life, the way that we live out the new life that was given to us by Jesus Christ, shining as lights in the world. Let's shine for Jesus. Let everyone know that we belong to Jesus. Let's live in such a way that those who live around us may want to say, I would love to know that person that has made such a difference in that person's life. I would like to be like him or like her. I would like to shine for Jesus. May the Lord enable each and every one of us to shine for him in this world in which he has placed us with a purpose to shine for Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you and praise you once again for your goodness and for your love. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of being lights in this world. Help us to shine. Help us to show Jesus to those who live around us by our ways, by our walk, by our thoughts, by our deeds, by our attitudes, in every possible way. Help us, Father. Enable us through the power of your Holy Spirit to live out the Christian life as lights in a world full of sin. We ask it in that wonderful and in that precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.